Hello everyone and welcome to video number 7 where we're going to discuss the delay and attenuator sections of the Behringer Neutron. As I mentioned in the last video, the video of the overdrive and delay, unfortunately I couldn't capture the sounds coming out of reactor, so for that reason I won't be demonstrating the potentialities of the delay in this video as well as the attenuators. However, I've already made a video to show you the potentialities of the overdrive and delay modules. And in that video, you will also be able to hear some of the sounds I have created using the synth. So with all this, it's now time to get started looking at the delay. So let's jump into section 3 of the Behringer manual straight away. Back into the Behringer manual, we can see that we have three parameters to control in the delay section. One of them is the time. As you increase the time, the longer the delay becomes. We've got, after that, the repeats, and the repeats is the exact same as a feedback. So, if you're not familiar with this, what is basically happening is you are listening to more and more repeats of the sound you are playing. Then our last parameter is the mix, which adjusts between the wet and dry. So when the mix control is turned fully to the left, no effect will be heard. Turning the mix control fully to the right will give you the delayed wet signal only. This makes me think of only one module that we can use in reactor. In this case is the crossfade. The crossfade will give us the exact properties we need to replicate this. With the repeat control fully to the right, repeats will be infinite and keep building. So we've got everything we need. Let's just check section 4 and see if there's anything else that we need to know. In section 4, I can see straight away that we've got something important to consider, which is the delay time between 24 milliseconds and 640 milliseconds. Everything else mentioned in this section, we can only test it once the matrix is done. So Let's skip this bit and start building our delay module in Reactor. Once inside Reactor, we are going to do the usual, which is get a macro, connect the inputs and outputs, and finally get a single delay module. Let's get a multiplication and addition module and create some controls for the delay time, which we are going to call time and another control called repeats, which in this case is our feedback. We then connect the input to the addition side of the mult add module, and then the output to the remaining uh, input on the mult add module. Also, the output needs to go into the input of the single delay and we are going to connect the input of the macro to 00, zero and the output of the delay to zero 01. And this control will be our mix. Remember, the mix once is on the left, no effect will be heard. On the right, only the effect will be heard. We now need to change the minimum value of the time for 24 milliseconds and the maximum to 640 milliseconds as stated by the Behringer manual. And this is it, we finished the delay module on our synth and if you want to know more about what is happening on the delay section I suggest you look at chapter 4 of the Reactor 6 built in primary manual where you can find a fantastic explanation on how the time delay works. Before we build the attenuators, let's have a look at the diagram again of the neutron normalized routing. Uh, so as you can see we've got the unipolar LFO connected to the attenuator 2 
then the attenuator 2 will modulate the pulse width of both oscillator 1 and 2. It also modulates the attenuator 1 and the attenuator 1 and 2 will be both output to the matrix. So let's have a look on how to build this in Reactor 6. Once again we need to build a macro called attenuators and connect the uni LFO output into the input of the attenuators macro. We're going to call it uni in and then we are going to get a knob which we're going to name it attenuator2 and this once again we're going to use the multiplication so we can determine the level we want to send to the output of the attenuator2. Once again we're going to repeat the process for the attenuator1 and our first stage is completed. Now we need to jump back to the synth macro and we are going to connect attenuator 2 into the oscillators and create a new input called attenuator 2 in. Then we are going to jump into the oscillators macro and connect the attenuator 2 in into both oscillator 1 and 2 by creating two new inputs. Once I got inside oscillator 1 I started by tidying up a little bit because as you can see it starts to become a little bit messy at some point but if we keep tidying up everything becomes slightly clear. Now all we need to do is get the pulse width and join it together with the attenuator 2 and create an addition and we are ready to start modulating the pulse width of the pulse sync oscillator in oscillator 1. Inside oscillator 2 repeat this process and job is done. And this concludes our video for today, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, give us a subscribe. The next video, as I already mentioned, will be the synth overview and we are going to look at the overdrive and delay modules that we just built, as well as some sounds I've created already using this synth. So don't forget to watch the next video and once again, thanks for watching.